All right, so we have a distribution of answers, quite a distribution actually. Um, so there's a funny thing. I, I noticed that the, that the major part of that distribution is answers B, C, and D. There's a funny thing about B, C, and D is that they agree about two energy changes. They agree that at least B is true and then C and D add more things. So they agree that the thermal energy of the ice changes and the thermal energy of the iron changes. And so I'm going to agree with you there. The thermal, the iron is hot. It's going to transfer heat to the thing that's cold. Temperature is the thing that counts for transferring heat. Temperature differences are the thing that's important. The hot thing transfers heat to the cold thing. If the hot iron loses heat, well it's already a solid so it can't change phase so its thermal energy is going to go down. The ice, the water, frozen water, the block of ice is going to pick up heat because it gets heat transferred to it from the iron. Its thermal energy can change because it's also not at a phase transition. It's too cold for the phase transition at 200 Kelvin. So its thermal energy will go up. So all of you are, uh, who chose B, C, and D are, are right about those two. Um, and I think that you're wrong about whatever else you added in. That B is the answer I would choose. And the reason is you don't know without a calculation whether any of the ice melted. You might have an idea, you might have a feeling, your intuition might tell you something, it could be wrong. I didn't check this yesterday, I really should have. I'm pretty sure I set up the amounts to contradict what I know is a lot of your uh, intuition. So I think I set up the amounts so the final temperature would be lower than 273 Kelvin. So lower than the freezing point of ice. So the final temperature would have solid ice, no bond energy changes, none of the ice melted, and really cold iron. Now even if I didn't set that up correctly, you don't know that that isn't what happened. You know for sure that the thermal energy of the iron went down and that the ice went up. But you don't know if the ice got to zero degrees C, in other words 273 Kelvin, and started melting. You might feel that it did, but you don't know that it did. And I'm pretty sure I set it up so that it did not. Um, so that gets at a possible thing that you might be thinking, and, and I never know how many people might be thinking this, and that's if you put a hot block of iron on top of ice, the top surface of the ice is probably going to melt because it's really hot. But this, the, the beauty of energy conservation is that it does not matter what goes on in the middle. <coughs> the only thing that matters is what happens at the end. So maybe right away some of the ice at the top melted into water and drained down to the bottom. But if there's enough ice and it's cold enough so that the iron got all the way below 273 Kelvin at the end, then that water that pooled at the bottom had to refreeze. So the only thing that counts is not what happens in the middle, but differences between the beginning and the end points. Yeah? So mass doesn't play a role in that? Um, mass is the critical thing that plays the role in this. And I'm saying I think I set it up right so that the iron, so that the ice doesn't melt. So I can tell you, I mean, there are situations where your intuition will be correct. And there are situations where it will, where you have to check your intuition with calculations. So here's a situation where I think your intuition will be correct. The iron is on the bottom, right? Okay. So here's a chunk of iron that I put in. And then the chunk of ice that I put in is 
is going to be 10 feet high. So I put a chunk of ice on top of that, that piece of iron. Okay, now there's mass is really important. I have a lot of ice on top of the iron. Does the ice end up molten at the end? Do you know for sure? What does your intuition tell you about the final temperature? Is it closer to 500 Kelvin or closer to 200? It's a lot closer to 200 Kelvin. In fact, the ice in the end will hardly heat up at all. Just a little bit. And the iron will cool down a lot. 700 Kelvin. Sorry, 300 Kelvin. I, I can add, but I shouldn't have. I should have subtracted. Iron will cool down 300 Kelvin. Approximately. A little less, actually. And, and you can do the reverse. Here's the ice. And here's the iron. And now the final temperature is going to be closer to 500 Kelvin. The iron will cool down only a tiny bit because of that little bit of ice. And the ice will be liquid water pulled out on top of the... No. The ice will be water and if this is iron is big enough, uh, I'll bring the ice up to the liquid ice, the liquid, this will melt, there'll be liquid, that will heat up, that will boil away, and, and the whole thing, and it'll turn into a gas. And so the final result depends crucially on those amounts. It really depends on the amounts of the various things. My point in asking this question is to get you to realize that your intuition, when those amounts are close together, your intuition is, is not so good. And, and you're going to have to do a calculation to figure out. So my next question is what should you calculate? I don't want to ask that one. I'm just going to tell you. Um, one thing, because I don't have time, one thing that you could do is figure out how much energy you need to take away from the iron to get the iron down to zero degrees C. To get the iron from 500 Kelvin down to 273 Kelvin. If you know how much energy you have to take out of the iron to get it down to 273, you calculate that number, you take that amount of energy and you put it into the ice. Then you find out, did that get the ice up to 273? Because if it did not, then you still got a ways to go and the whole thing will be less than 273. If it did get the ice, if that's enough energy to get the ice up to 273 and there's some left over from the iron, then it's going to melt some of the ice. So you can piecewise figure out what might be going on. The things you know for sure are, are this, question, this answer B. Those are the things you know for sure. And you can go from the things you know for sure to try to guess at and figure out, not guess at, calculate what else might be going on. Um, I, I have another question, two, two more questions actually that I'd like to ask you. And so, and so I'm going to ask one of them right now. Suppose I add the same amount of thermal energy. So changes in thermal energy, I can, one way to change the thermal energy is by adding heat. So I could say I change the thermal energy of two different physical systems by the same amount. In other words, I add the same amount of heat to two different things. One of them is identical to the other. It's made up of the same kind of material at the same temperature, in the same phase, but it's twice as big. So there's like a bowling ball that's big and then a bowling ball that's small. I add the same amount of heat to each one. I change the thermal energy of each of them by the same amount which has the larger temperature change. Or I could say, and I really do here, the temperature of the larger system 
will change by the same amount as the temperature of the smaller, by twice as much as temperature of the smaller, half as much as the temperature of the smaller, etc., etc. I'll give you a minute. 